Hello, everyone. Uh, today is our first session of American, Cor American Corners Kazakhstan English Teacher Professional Development Series. Uh, we are so excited to have all of you today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kamajai. I'm the today's co-host, and I am the coordinator of American Corner for Sanai. Okay, today uh, we will talk about best teaching practices and techniques from the open program. Uh, also, I would like to remind you that our session uh, will be in 60 minutes, so stay tuned till the end. And let's be active on the chat as you always do. So now I would like you to remind about some rules for stable connection. Turn off your microphones when you're not using it. So if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat box. Don't be shy, be active. And the meeting will be recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel. You can find it there, America, the Sun American Corners. And send at least four out of the five sessions to yes. And now I'm glad to English Language Fellow, U.S. Department of State Program, August Ganshi. All right. Well, yeah. Welcome, August. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here with us today. So please, I give you the floor. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, it's still, uh, oh, it's still still showing. I think you still have the uh, screen or. All right, okay. Okay, all right, everyone. So, hello, everyone. Guess, salamets bay, privet, hello fellow English teachers across Kazakhstan. Really great to be here. Uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, just it's it's great. Um, I'm happy to be presenting another wonderful, hopefully another really engaging, active English teacher professional development webinar series through American Corners Kazakhstan. Um, let's go ahead and get into it because we got a lot to kind of cover and a lot to go through tonight. So tonight, best teaching practices and techniques from the Open Programs Global Online Courses. Now, our overall professional development series, you can kind of see the lineup coming up here. Uh, so coming up in the upcoming weeks, again, it's gonna be five webinars in total. Next, we'll have media literacy for English language learners in Kazakhstan. It's going to coincide with Hello, if I can ask uh, everybody to mute uh, their microphones, please. Yeah, thank you. And after that, we're going to focus on critical thinking for teachers and learners and American English online resources for practical application in Kazakhstan, as well as online vocabulary and lexical tools that you can use as well for practical application for English language learners in Kazakhstan. So for those of you that may be new, um, I did provide uh, multiple other series in the past before through American Corners Kazakhstan as a virtual English language fellow. My name is August Garnsey. Now I am the English language fellow. I am here located now in Nur Sultan. Great to be back in Kazakhstan um, after my time I spent in Kokshetau, and then I went back to the US during the COVID era. And now I'm back in Kazakhstan again. Um, just a couple of points about me. I did get my master's in TESOL from Northeastern Illinois University in Chicago. Terrific university. I got my cell cell to TKT CLIL as well. I'm partnered. My host institution here in Nur Sultan is with Ellen Gamilla of Eurasian National University. I get to work with the fantastic foreign languages theory and practice department there. I work with many talented faculty members 
plus the many wonderful and talented graduate undergraduate students as well there, pre-service, in-service teachers. I get to work as well with English Access Micro Scholarship program teams across Kazakhstan. And of course, one of my most favorite things to do is my work with American Corners Kazakhstan. Now, I did mention my time in Kokshitao before because I used to be an international English teacher uh, for Nish there, okay? So reach out to me if you ever have questions about anything about opportunities for development. You can see my email. You can follow me also at Instagram as well for a lot of opportunities that I advertise and promote as well. Now, before we get any further into this, just to let everybody know that just by attending this event, uh, you will be photographed. So your participation uh, allows us to be able to potentially share maybe photos or video images of this webinar uh, for other kind of promotional purposes within the State Department, the U.S. Embassy, Regional English Language Office of Central Asia, American Corners, Kazakhstan, or myself as well. Okay. All right. So in this webinar, it's going to be very simple. You're going to learn what is open. Okay, a lot of you may know of it, but a lot of you may not, and the open program. And then the more important parts, I'm going to pass to my invited co-speakers, and they're going to share with you some practical knowledge from their experience as alumni of global online courses and their courses content. We're going to hear about materials development for English language learners, grammar teaching techniques, as well as educational technology. And you'll be able to get to throw out some questions throughout the chat because of our large number of participants we will ask everybody to stay muted. Um, we can't allow you kind of to be asking questions orally because there's just too many of us. Um, but do please, we encourage you guys to engage through the chat. I'll be looking for questions. We'll try to address those questions as soon as we can, the best that we can, okay? All right, so let's go into OPEN. And what is OPEN? Okay, the Online Professional English Network. Okay, this is through the US Department of State. The Online Professional English Network program offers virtual learning opportunities for not just English language teaching professionals, but other professionals and just English language learners in general worldwide. It promotes mutual exchange of culture and provides free access. That free word is important for us teachers. We love hearing the word free, you know, to teaching and learning materials, which can you can reuse, you can adapt, and you can share again with others as well, too. And a lot, all of this professional development, these opportunities, these programs, these courses, these webinars, they're all developed by US academic institutions, great knowledgeable experts in within our field of TESOL. So these are very high quality type of programs. Now you can see the link on my screen. I just don't really have a lot of time to be able to go very deeply into about open about the program. I'll just tell a few more main points about it. I want most of the time to be for our invited guest speakers, the alumni of the open program so they can share some of their best practices with you. Now, very simply to help you visualize some of the opportunities there through open, you can see webinars, the American English live professional development webinar series for English teachers is going on right now. These webinars are great. They had one last night. It was fantastic. I had my graduate students watching it, but so there's Great webinars. You can access that through American English for Educators Facebook page. There's there's MOOCs. There's facilitated MOOCs as well too. And then there's the global online courses. Now the Open Program or the Open Global Online Courses for English Teachers. This offers English teaching professionals in Central Asia the opportunity to be able to take innovative online university level classes and online professional development programming for teachers. Now, these courses, and you can see there's a list of many different courses. You're gonna hear from the alumni tonight who did each different courses. So you get to know a little bit about three different courses, but typically these programs are eight weeks with an orientation prior to that as well too. So it's about three months. Again, you can see another link. We're gonna make these links all available to you because we're definitely gonna encourage you to go check it out, to do more research on your own. And I will let you know how or where you can send your questions to to get those answered because I just don't have a lot of time to really kind of talk much about the open program right now, except for some of the basics. Now, the open program, one are the classes, well, basically, they're kind of think of it as kind of quarterly. There's a fall, winter, spring, and summer term. 
Um, we actually just got through wrapping up for registration for the winter term. So you have plenty of time to prepare before registering for and applying for the spring term. Okay, so the spring term will be happening next year. You can check out social media on the website for future announcements about that registration. You can go to, um, again, if I can ask you guys, please, if you can mute yourselves. Um, so that way we don't have any background noise or any other conversations going on. Thank you, guys. All right. So RELO, so Regional English Language Office of Central Asia. You can go to their Facebook account or also for the U.S. Embassy of Kazakhstan here in Nur Sultan. You can go as well to their Facebook account. You will see announcements posted there. That's the best place to go to check up for updates about that registration application period when it opens and when it's going. It should start maybe in a couple months later this year. So be looking for the next registration period for the open program. You can kind of see who can apply. Again, most of you are all gonna be eligible to be able to apply for this program, okay? Now, the application process, there will be some information provided through the social media. You can see the postings as well through Regional uh, English Language Office Central Asia or the U.S. Embassy social media account. Okay, so guys, we'll put the links into the chat for you so you guys can search, uh, research that at your own. Okay, other than that, I've got to go ahead and pass it over to my invited guest speakers. I'm going to go and stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go and pass it to the very first of my three wonderful guest speakers tonight. First up is going to be Olga Ashenko. Uh, Olga, it's going to be all yours. All right, take okay. it away. Okay. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. Uh, no, I have got the message that uh, organizer um, turned off demonstration on my screen. Right. Yeah, now I can do this. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, everybody, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, let's get started. So, today, as you can see, the topic yes. of my presentation will be authentic materials, and um, we will talk about a few things. I took um, a course, teach, professional development for teacher training course with OPEN, uh, organized with the help of Arizona State University. That was my course that I took with OPEN. And um, before I created the teacher training course, I was um, in, uh, curious what kind of topic will be uh, relevant for teachers. That's why I conducted the survey, which um, showed me that teachers were interested in uh, learning about, creating, and using authentic materials. Material. But at the same time, uh, as you as you can see on the pie chart, not everybody was sure about what authentic materials were. That's why today we will talk about uh, three things. First, what authentic material is. I will show you a few sources of ma uh, materials for authentic uh, activities that you can use. And today I will show you how to create authentic material. And authentic material, which I show you how to create, later I will give you a link and you can uh, download this from my Telegram channel. Okay, let's get started. And uh, authentic material is a material which is created not for the teaching purposes. That means it could be anything. It could be newspapers, magazine, could be TV show, could be Instagram post or YouTube videos. But uh, when I talk to the teachers about using, creating authentic material, um, the concern usually, the problem uh, is that uh, they are too difficult to use. They might be too difficult to use, but it's not always the case. Let me show you a few examples. As uh, authentic materials, you can use menus, or you can use some um, tube maps, right? Underground maps. You can use them for scanning, for scanning. You can use them for uh, learning the numbers and the alphabet. And you can even create some um, short dialogues, real life dialogues using this uh, realia. Uh, another example of authentic materials that you can use, uh, look at my screen, you can go to name tags. And with the help of the name text, you can teach your students imperative moods, model verbs, and sometimes ask them and see if they understand the jokes. Look at the green one. 
Another um, source of authentic materials could be uh, photographs, painting, pictures, cartoons. You can use them to teach present, present continuous tense, past simple tense. You can use them to teach deduction, past or present. And you can use them to write stories, which is always great. Let's move on. Uh, one of the great sources of uh, articles or materials for creating authentic materials for language learners will be magazines. Um, you probably know about National Geographic, but National Geographic, it's uh, kind of hard for our students to understand study, uh, for especially for school children, but there is a special um, kids National Geographic uh, magazine, which is full of uh, Quite short articles. If you look at my screen, you can see there is just two paragraph article about pandas. Uh, you can also find a lot of different kind of puzzles, ready made, free. Uh, you can use with your students, and this uh, picture you can see, find the differences, and a lot of word games, just ready to use. Now another uh, magazine which I uh, always use with my students is the Week. The Week is the uh, quite serious magazine because it's published um, materials about uh, politics, science, culture, environment. But this one, if you look at the title, is for teenagers. You can see Junior written underneath. And um, today I will show you just one thing I do with this, with the article from this uh, magazine. Every issue has got a special page, which is called Big Debate. And there are different yeah, kind of... Wait, okay, there are different kind of questions um, posted there. As you can see right here, the question goes like, are there too many streaming services? There could be another question like, do emojis enrich your um, language? Or do we need to hold Olympic Games? How can you use this? Uh, first, you ask your students to brainstorm the ideas for and ideas against. After that, you can ask your students to read the article and compare if they have got the same ideas uh, as the authors of the article are uh, all for you, right? Um, second thing, you can dig, you can mine this text for vocabulary, especially linking devices for coherence and cohesion. These texts are very rich. Um, and then the last thing, although this article doesn't have a concluding paragraph, it has got beautiful written introductory paragraph. And if you look at this, I highlighted special section of introductory paragraph for you. Uh, the first couple of sentences talking about the history of streaming services. The yellow part talks about the situation now. And the uh, pink one is the beautifully constructed thesis statement. And you can ask your students to look at them, learn how it's done and use as the model for writing their own articles. All right, let's move on. Another uh, source of authentic materials will be infographic. You can see the website uh, uh, in the middle and uh, you can use them uh, for the lower levels and for the higher levels as well. So if you uh, work with the lower levels, you can ask them, look at the biggest uh, infographic. You can say, uh, where do teachers spend most time in the classroom? In which country? Anybody can answer me? So I cannot see the um, chat box, but maybe you can help me. Costa Rica. Perfect. Costa Rica. Very good. Yes. Costa Rica. And, and in which country the lowest number? Russia. 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 So uh, I think your elementary pre intermediate students can manage to do that, right? With the oh, higher God. level of students, you can use these diagrams to practice a uh, um, description of the diagrams, like an IELTS writing. Quite useful. Um, Another source of authentic materials for you will be websites where you can find information about hotels or about the books like Goodreads website. The texts are quite short and they are rich in beautiful vocabulary. Uh, you can especially adjectives. So your students can uh, learn, pick them up and then describe their own books. When it comes to practicing listening with using uh, authentic ma uh, materials, you can definitely use a lyrics training website. So you probably know about this. Just listen to the song, um, TV show, documentaries, and you have to quickly type the name, uh, the word which is missing. And another source of authentic material for listening, uh, for creating listening activities will be BBC radio news briefings. They're very short, just one 
maximum three minutes long different kind of news briefings, which you can use to create your authentic materials. I would definitely recommend them. Let's move on. Another uh, today, we will talk about how to create authentic materials. And um, that will be, I will create, I created this and you can download this if you want, um, based on the post published by The Economist on Instagram. Uh, you might have different kind of opinion about this TV show. Some people like, some people hate, but the thing is not about TV show at all. The thing is that under this post, you can see 972 comments. And I use these comments to create the activities, which you can uh, later use. Let's see how you can do this. Activity number one. Uh, you can ask your students to look at the comments and find the phrases that people use to express their opinion. And uh, let me point it out that most of the people uh, who write these comments, they're native speakers. And of course, you can see common phrases like I think, I believe, but you can also see less common like I can see that I found it boring. And you can also see cleft sentence, what I like about this, right? Quite useful. Try to uh, ask your students to remember them because they will need them later. Second activity, uh, you can dig, you can mine all these comments for vocabulary. So you can see nice words like um, obvious, overblown, overrated, for example. But if you're interested in teaching using lexical approach, you can teach them chunks. These comments are full of chunks. You have got chunk like doesn't deserve the hype. You have got the chunk like at any given moment. You have got chunk as the binge watched, binge, binge watched, quite useful, right? And your students will love this because it's a real language, up to date. Activity number three. Um, some of the comments uh, could be not exactly polite, like this one. But you can see that four people replied. And you can ask your students, what do you think they replied? Uh, did they reply in a polite way or an aggressive way? And what would you say in response to this kind of comment? Uh, fortunately, four people who answered this comment were very polite. And you can use them uh, with your students. Uh, next activity. Um, there are nine, 927, so you can collect some of them and ask your students to group them in three categories, like positive, <laughs> negative, uh, on neutral comments. And I must tell you, it's not easy sometimes because the ideas, um, sometimes they're vague and you need to read deeper to understand them. Okay, um, after I took the course, as you can see, Open Professional Development for Teacher Training, I was supposed to conduct a workshop. And I did that. What I, uh, what I did, I conducted two hour workshop on authentic material with the help of uh, Kasti. Thank you, Tatiana Litagina, for helping me with that. So if you go to Kasti website, uh, you can find them there and watch two hour um, workshop on authentic material. So creating and sources and everything else. At the same time, I uploaded this video on my um, Telegram channel, Discovery by English. And on the same uh, Telegram channel, you can find the activity um, based on the economist post that I have just showed you. Um, and the final thought, the final thought is um, when I finished this course, the idea was to create a group of like-minded people who um, would like to create, use, and share thinking materials with their colleagues. So if you are one of them, join uh, join me, join the Telegram channel, and um, you can ask me any questions on Instagram. That's it. Thank you for listening. All right. Th th thank you, Olga. That was that was great. And there were um, just a couple of questions, kind of things to mention. Uh, maybe, Olga, you, you can, um, maybe what we can do is we can put together a document, because I think we'll have a lot of different links for resources for our participants. So, 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 so maybe that way we can... Um, kind of put together a large source because people are asking for uh, some of your links for some of these uh, resources again. So uh, participants, so what we can do is we can put together a document and we can kind of follow up and send it to you later on, which will contain links from all the presentations. Okay, we can make it kind of a centralized type of resource. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be good. And uh, yeah, and I saw one, one comment out there about 
students love reading comments and honestly not even just students but just all of us in general i catch myself too reading uh, honestly <laughs> sometimes i look at comments more than the, the other content so yeah that's really a great thing because yes so learner students say they, they love reading comments they do that a lot so that's a really great uh, idea all right so sure, that way sure. so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and pass um again so we'll we'll get you guys some of those links from olga's amazing presentation for terrific ideas about authentic materials and i really support about lexical approach and language chunks uh as well too i mean just really good stuff so uh, next up, give me our next. Okay, sorry, can I, yeah. can I ask a question, please? Uh, August. August. No, I'm Balia Jolomano from Almaty. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. So uh, I thought professional English or professional network. So it's for general English, yes, teachers. The word professional refers to the network, not to the English, yes? No, you don't know. I teach professional English. I mean, English for journalists, English for, so this is what I mean by professional English. Are there any activities or training activities organized for teachers of professional English? No. Pro professional, so you're talking about like other types of English, say like medical yeah. English, yes, yes, business yes, English, yes, legal English. Yes. No, nothing in Nur Sultan. There, 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 there are MOOCs for, oh. For, for others, like media, okay. media okay. literacy, there, there are other types for other professions, yeah, not just for... Uh, for this, one is, this one is for general English, yes? General English, not... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm quite understanding your, your question here. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll address that. If you can put into the chat, okay. and we'll okay. try to get back to you okay. on that one. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. All right. So uh, again, thank you, Olga. So our next invited guest speaker is going to be Nerjarkin Samigola. So Nerjarkin, it's going to be all yours. Do you have a, or do you, yes, you do have co-host ability. All right. Okay. Thank you. It's all yours. Okay. Thank you, Olga. So hello, everyone. Uh, so I can't express how I am grateful to have all of you here. So um uh, today I will talk about teaching grammar communicatively, so all of you know how it is important to teach a language in a communicative way, but what about grammar? So in today's presentation, it will just have uh, three parts. Just a second. Uh -huh. in, so in my presentation, I'm going to talk about, um, so what is... Oops. Uh -huh. so what is CDLT and the ways of teaching grammar uh, in communicative way? And I'll discuss the importance of grammar and show you different activities that you can apply later in your classes. And I'll talk about some benefits taking notes. So in short about uh, myself, my name is Nusharqan. So I have master's degree in education. So uh, and currently I'm an IELTS trainer. So this year I completed my summer courses. Uh, and I'm so happy that I was also selected as a high performance alumni. Um, <clears throat> so as August mentioned before, so um, uh, there are different programs for teachers. So the course that I uh, took actually was called Teaching Grammar Communicatively. So you can apply any of this. And um, so let's start talking about uh, role of grammar practice. So how it is important and what does actually grammar gives to uh, our students. Uh, so I know some teachers just keep uh, too much attention on teaching grammar and sometimes they spend 70% of their lesson exp about just to, uh, to give explanation about grammar structure and so on. But also some students ignore uh, teaching grammar and believe that the uh, teaching your students on like, uh, how to communicate is important. But I do not support either two ways. So uh, I believe that it's better to keep balancing between two sides. And uh, yes, uh, grammar should be taught, but it should be taught also in engaging ways that even your students should not be aware that they are learning grammar. So uh, what gives uh, actually grammar to your students? So they can improve their accuracy. Uh, they can will be speak 
uh, will be able to speak and uh, write without errors and also without pauses. And uh, they will learn to reorganize their knowledge, to integrate their new knowledge into old. <clears throat> so next, uh, uh, just the project I'm going to tell you, it's called TBLT. Maybe some of you already heard about this. Uh, it's a new uh, approach uh, in, and it's a subcategory of communication approach. That's why it has the key principles common with it. Uh, but uh, so if you don't know, uh, actually, so it also, uh, promotes uh, learner centeredness and uh, learning engagement with giving uh, purposeful uh, real life tasks uh, as well as uh, communicative approach. But the main difference is that uh, TBLT also provides opportunities for intentional learning when students actually uh, consciously employ uh, different cognitive strategies in order to learn words of grammar. So uh, the question is, so how we could apply TBLT in teaching grammar? So if you look at the framework, it will have three cycles. So it's a pre-task, task cycle, and a post-task. So what do we do during pre-task? So we introduce a topic and task, and we give a task. During the um, <clears throat> up, uh, task cycle, we plan, report, and analyze. And the last two stages are uh, post-task. It's a practice, evaluation, and reflection. So I would like to give you a short example of a grammar, <clears throat> how to teach grammar in, t in TBLT. So imagine uh, you are going to teach passive voice and the topic is holiday. So what do you do in, uh, during the introduction to topic and task? You can give glue, a, a glue or just a, <clears throat> a hint uh, to your students and they show them different pictures, music, songs, clothes uh, that relates to holidays and they will predict what topics they are going to learn. So when it's clear the topic is about holiday, the task is that you are going to give will be, for example, to read about certain holiday. So let's imagine it's a Thanksgiving day. So uh, they will work in, two, in pairs and you give this text, they will read and uh, uh, they should make a review, <clears throat> a short review about the text. And the review could be like this, so they should uh, fill these gaps and uh, they will have a ready review, like which contains only important information about the text, like who, what, where, and the why. Then um, <clears throat> next stage is the planning where uh, students will work in a group of four and uh, these groups will choose their favorite holiday and select different pictures that relates to their favorite holiday. So um, next stage is report where just these groups show their pictures and even give one sentence about the holidays and other students will guess their holiday. And uh, this uh, stage is important. And the main purpose of this stage is actually just increase your students' curiosity and just engage in the learning process that they will explore their just peers interests and their favorite uh, holidays. Next stage is analysis. Here's the important part of teaching grammar. <clears throat> so while you're explaining passive voice and uh, here, for example, you can go back to the review and it shows the sentences in passive voice. So you, you can elicit uh, with the use and the meaning and the forms of the passive voice. Also, you can uh, just let them find some sentence from the text with passive voice. And when it's clear with the, uh, about passive voice, you can go to the practice. So during the practice, they should give an introductory speech about their favorite holiday and their speech should include at least three sentences with passive voice. And during this practice, teacher just monitors these groups, checks their mistakes in order to make sure that all sentences with passive voice is right and uh, <clears throat> uh, can give feedback. And last stage, evaluation and reflection. So here all groups present their <clears throat> uh, favorite holiday. They can make, uh, give their speech and the share their roles, who's sharing the screen, who's uh, giving the speech. And the teacher assess uh, their work by, by a rubric. And also students will, will be able to comment each other's work. So that's, that was the short example of how to teach grammar. Um, using TBLT. So now it's about 
uh, gram activities. And if you would like, you can put your favorite gram activities in the chat box. So in the end of my presentation, I hope we can read some of good ideas. <clears throat> so types of grammar practice activities. So it could be three types, control it, guided and free practice. So I wrote the list of these um, <clears throat> activities. Maybe you were almost aware about them, but due to our short time, I just choose one from each group. So first is <clears throat> from the control of practice activities, the disappearing dialogue. So for example, you're learning certain grammar and you give them dialogue. So they will just practice it in pairs and you should also give them enough time to feel comfortable with this dialogue. Then uh, you will just uh, cut, delete some words and phrases and uh, let them do the practice again. And uh, you repeat the cycle until all the dialogue has gone. And this again helps them to uh, produce the dialogue without any help of written form. So next is <clears throat> guided practice. Uh, so two truths and the lie. So imagine they are learning present perfect and uh, you could give them a task to write three sentences about themselves. So two of them should be uh, true and the one should be a lie. And after they complete writing sentences, uh, other students would guess which of these two statements were true and the, which one was a lie. And the last one, free, activity, uh, free practice activities, when you give complete freedom to your students in order to use uh, just a variety of language items, uh, <clears throat> here is the information gap, like uh, two tables and each student have some certain piece of information as they should share with each other in order to uh, understand whole picture, whole thing, like this table. So information gap could be closed, could be open. So closed it means uh, the students should select only as, uh, should use selected item, gram items or words and open means as it can use various uh, <clears throat> grammar patterns. Okay, and the last part of my presentation about benefits. So if you'll take or decide to take uh, MOOCs, so uh, I'm sure that uh, you will get all the benefits that I would like to mention. So first is the courses are free, so you do not pay anything for this. Uh, I know all training courses are actually <laughs> expensive and sometimes oh, mostly they are uh, charged. So here you can apply for it for free. And the courses are created by American top universities. So you can be sure that all materials you are learning and uh, all lectures that you are listening are actually um, <clears throat> reliable. And the learners get worldwide exposure. It means you will work with your uh, colleagues uh, and uh, <clears throat> teachers around the world. So it's really interesting experience. Official certificate. So by the end of the course, if you complete all your tasks, assignments, you'll get this paper, which actually proves that you've done everything. And the career development. So um, I think if you are a new coming teacher or you are looking for a new job or you would like to get a promotion, I think it's a great chance to stand out from different candidates and say that you had such course and uh, just uh, had a wonderful experience uh, from, from the uh, courses. And the interaction with experts, so you will have a coordinator, for example, from the USA who controls and guides you. And uh, I had the coordinator, her name was Ellen. So I had the very thoughtful comments about my job and my works. And that's why it really helped me to look at my teaching style and uh, just teaching grammar in different way. And how uh, August mentioned, so you can find any information about how to apply to the uh, MOOCs uh, on the website, USMC website in Kazakhstan, and uh, uh, Relo, so they have Facebook, you can follow them and keep updated about the last news. And uh, by the way, they are accepting for or applications for the winter term 2022. So uh, orientation course will be available in November 29. So you'll have enough time to apply. So do not lose your chance uh, to be part of such <clears throat> incredible experience. So um, uh, I'm so grateful uh, to be here. And I would like to say thank you, August Garancy, who invited me, American Corners, uh, and uh, Relo. Thank you. 
So uh, about activities, maybe um, we can read some ideas if you share it. Yeah, uh, uh, Najera, can I see that there was, well, you asked about um, putting their preferred or favorite type of grammar activities into the chat. And uh, yeah, we were getting all kinds of different uh, activities being shared in the chat uh, from context-based gap filling activities and gap fills, um, uh, other ones about building sentences with handouts. Um, so there was, there's a few different types of ideas in there. So uh, thank you everyone for sharing some of your uh, preferred activities uh, methods to do that. So thank you, Nerjarkin, for that wonderful presentation. Um, just kind of actually to correct slightly. Um, so actually, so for the winter, um, actually the registration actually just actually closed for that one. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, spring uh, will be the next uh, term that you can register for. So you guys will have a lot of time to be able to prepare for that, to do your research about the open program, if that's what you would like to apply for, if you'd prefer maybe for like the MOOCs or maybe even to apply for a facilitated MOOC as well. There's a lot of different opportunities uh, through open. So again, we put those links into the chat, uh, do check it out and search through it. So now I'm gonna to move to the next invited uh, and our last invited guest speaker here for the evening, uh, Natalia Kim. Natalia, it's all yours. We're, we're going to be a little tight on time. Uh, I'm just going to ask all of our participants. Um, we're probably going to maybe go just a few minutes over. Um, so that ways we can make sure that we get everything in um, as well as I'd like to do a little group photo at the end as well, too, before everybody leaves. All right, Natalia, it's all yours. All right. Oh, hello, everyone. And thank you for coming today. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about Jumpboard, uh, about why Jumpboard was created and who is benefiting from it and how you can implement uh, this kind of technology in your work. So let's get started. So Google Jumpboard uh, is a digital whiteboard that allows uh, for remote and in-person collaboration uh, on a shared space. Students or colleagues can sketch uh, out ideas, problem solve, or draw collaboratively and synchronously. So let's uh, check how we can create your Jamboard. Uh, once you have a Google account, you can access Google Jamboard uh, in browser or via mobile applications that work on tablets and smartphones. So you can create it there and save jumps there directly. Now let's uh, have a look at the Jamboard tools. Uh, so this uh, the Jamboard the tools are really useful, handy, and offers a variety of features that uh, collaborators can use for a variety of uh, classroom purposes. So just a minute. Uh, first of all, you can choose any background you want. So here we have plain background. It can be dotted, lined, squared, uh, simple blue or black, for example, for contrast. Uh, next one, you may choose any um, drawing tool here as a pen, a marker, a brush, or a highlighter. Uh, next one, if you want to erase something, you may use the eraser, so you can see here. And the, 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 what I like the most about this Jamboard is sticky note. So look, look at this sticky note. They are different colors. Uh, you just insert uh, anything you want to write there and just stick uh, this note on your Jamboard. Now let us have a look how we can use this tool or this Jamboard in our work. So Jamboard can be used for brainstorming ideas by using sticky notes. Uh, it can be used to carry out a project or a poster by a class or small groups. Uh, it can be used for storytelling story by inserting images or text. 
um, can be used for discussions and fulfilling different tasks and assignment. So let us have a look. Mm -hmm. So the first one is brainstorming. So look, you have your Jamboard. Uh, in the center, you may place the topic and students can put their ideas on the Jamboard. So it can be um, made simultaneously. They can be asynchronously, sorry. And it, uh, uh, this Jamboard can be used by a group. So that is one way how we can use Jamboard. Uh, next one, uh, it's a great way to carry out a project or a poster by using Jamboard. And by the way, these works uh, have been made by my students when we talked about endangered animals. Uh, Jamboard can be used by, for storytelling. So you may put some pictures and students can write something there. Uh, it can be used for discussions. So look, you divide into two parts and they put their pros and cons. And the last one, it uh, can be used for a variety of tasks, a variety of uh, exercises uh, that can be created for your students. And now uh, I would like to show you in practice uh, how we can use it um, so you open your Google mm -hmm. and look here you have this corner and please choose Jamboard. Look, it's here. You click this icon and here you have got Google Jamboard. And in the lower uh, right corner, you can see the plus. So click the plus. And look, you have created your jump, your jump. And uh, you have, uh, you can create up to 20 jumps. Look here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you, you may, let us say that 20 different groups of students uh, can work on your jump board at the same time. So here you choose your background. Let us say, look square. Let us choose the pen and, and you write anything you want. Mm -hmm. So I have talked about sticky notes. So that is sticky notes. Mm -hmm. And you put your sticky notes any way you want. You may upload images from your computer, uh, from Google, Google disk. You have a laser, but if you want to write something, you can look, create such a box and write something here. So that is um, the tool I wanted to present today. And to sum up, I'd like to say that I find this Jamboard really handy and user-friendly. It's really easy to use. Uh, and I used a lot uh, last year when we were on distance learning. It helped me a lot. Thank you for coming here and thank you for inviting me. All right. Well, th thank you, uh, Natalia, for that presentation with Jamboard. And yeah, we were definitely still in a blended learning environment. I know that for my lessons, I have offline, I have online. Sometimes my offline goes online. Sometimes my online goes offline. So we definitely can find ways for using 
Jamboard and all this technology as well too. So thank you for that. Um, guys, uh, just wanna let you know that there is a link in the chat. Um, it's been posted a few times. Just bring your attention to it. There is a Google form that I would like for all our participants to fill out in order to confirm for your attendance in this webinar, for your certificates as well too. Again, remember you need to attend at least four of the webinars to get that certificate. So do please fill out the Google form survey. It's just a three, two, one exit ticket. Um, short and simple, I wanna hear from you. Uh, American Corners, we'd love to hear from you as well your feedback for this webinar, for the presentations, things that you thought were interesting, questions that you still have um, as well. So I wanna just give another big thank you to all our invited guest speakers again. Uh, Olga Ashenko, thank you very much again. Nurjarkin Samigala, thank you very much. Natalia Kim, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate the chat was very active. There was a lot of comments in the chat. Um, sideways, we really don't have time to do a Q&A session, uh, unfortunately, but I'm sure other people do still have questions maybe for you. Um, you guys did provide your emails. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we will put together then kind of a master document containing all of these links, links that I shared in the beginning about open, the open program, other types of online professional development opportunities for all the teachers across Kazakhstan, as well as links for resources and ideas and things that were shared by all our presenters. And we'll be able to send that out to all of our registered participants. Um, so again, so uh, we'll get you those, uh, those links, guys. Other than that, um, any of our invited guest speakers, Olga, Nurjarkin, Natalia, did you have anything else that you'd like to add as well? No, just thank you for the opportunity. It's great to see so many people who would like to learn. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, I've been learning that, that Kazakhstan, that English teachers, we're a hungry group here. And, I, and, I don't, and food's great in Kazakhstan, but I don't mean that kind of food. We're all hungry for development, and we're always looking for opportunities to develop, to learn, engage each other. I'm obviously a big facilitator and promoter of teacher to teacher engagement. You, everyone that's been to my previous webinars knows that I always have invited guest speakers. I reach out to total strangers that I've never met before and I, and I collaborate with them. And that's just one of the wonderful aspects about what we do as English language teaching professionals and stuff. We're a strong community of professionals. So like I mentioned, I would really like to be able to take a group photo, okay? So that was, um, if you don't have your camera on, go ahead and turn on your camera. It doesn't matter if you have your son, your daughter, your cat, your dog on your lap, that's no problem. <laughs> if you're eating your dinner, it's fine. Go ahead and turn on your cameras, everybody. Let's take a group photo because we are all one big happy family, right? So yeah, let's go ahead and let's do that. Maybe. A, Kamaja, maybe, uh, are, are you able to go ahead and take maybe some screenshots? we got a big group, so we're probably gonna have to take a, a few <laughs> of all the different pages of some participants. Of course. Uh, yeah. Do you mind uh, to put some reactions or smiles? So maybe a warm photo, actually. There, there we go. Maybe we can do something like, I know we can, um, I know we used to do like, the, the heart, I mean, my students always make me do like the BTS thing or whatever that is too, but I got tired of doing that. So maybe some hearts out there, you know, some hand gestures too, you can put out there. Thumbs up's always good. Okay, so for one, two, three, and smile. One, two, three. Okay, one moment. Another one, because we have a lot of, who turned their cameras on. Thank you for that. Um, don't stop smiling. Uh, okay, one, two, three, one more. Okay, oh, nice. Oh, I need to take one more. <laughs> okay, next slide. Hey, I see some from some of the participants, so nice. Oh, that's 
Great. One, two, and three. Great. I think, and any more? I don't know. I was thinking about changing my hand gesture, but uh, I think <laughs> I think we're good. So everybody, it's great to see everybody again. So this is just the start of the webinar series. We got four more great present uh, webinars coming up next week. We're going to be focused on a very hot topic, very trendy thing, something that's really getting popular worldwide about integrating media literacy and that education into English language learning, how you can integrate this into the curriculum in Kazakhstan. We're going to have some great invited guest speakers next week that are going to provide practical application examples of how to integrate media literacy education into working with English language learners, your, your students in Kazakhstan. So it's going to be terrific opportunity. So do turn in for that one next week as well. Um, other than that, I guess, thank you, everyone. Great to see everyone again, and I'll see you next week, all right? Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Very great. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for meeting productive. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you.